Well, good day everybody and welcome. Uh, today I've got a Fleetwood 1061B. It's a rebadged Philips um, quintet. I believe they're made in about 1955-56, uh, something like that. Now this one's a real cracker and by that I mean it's got lots of cracks in it. So there's one right across the top there and there's a large section missing from the back. Chassis is not too bad. Uh, got all the valves and... oh no, we're missing one there. Uh, it's a five valve unit. Uh, if I go ahead, the, I'll have to try and fill this with uh, body filler. Uh, not impossible. The main issue I have with this is the Perspex front on the dial here is um, discoloured. So I'm going to, before I do anything, I'm going to try and clean that up and make sure it comes up to a good enough standard. Otherwise it's not worth continuing with the radio if that's not going to look any good. So if this uh, video doesn't appear on YouTube, you'll know that that didn't clean up properly. So now I'll, I'll try and uh, get that off. Um, I'll have to take the chassis out and we'll have a look at that as well. So there's just a couple of screws on the back there to undo the uh, chassis and it just slid out, so it's quite good. Uh, I took the speaker out. It's uh, sold, soldered onto the uh, uh, the chassis, so I had to pull the speaker out. It seemed the easiest thing to do. Uh, oh, there we go. Well, there it is. So um, I'll see... I'll see if it comes up. The um, Perspex, of course, discolours over time, and I think that's what's happened to this one, or that may be right. I'll see how I go. So I'm going to start with a fairly aggressive automotive polish. Uh, sorry, cut and polish. Let's see what that does. Uh, that was a good spot. This is a slightly less aggressive. This is a virtually a you know Sunday afternoon polish to uh, just bring back the shine on your car. This this isn't going to work. I can see it. It's just not taking it out. The the duck in the plastic is a chemical process, and really you can't get rid of it once it's uh, discolored. The plastic. That's it. Let's finish it off with a bit of brasso. I'll just try a bit of brasso on the back, but of course we can't do the back because it's got the uh, the stations printed on it, so I can't can't do anything with that. No, it's not. Nope. Okay. Yeah, that's just not good enough. It's pointless making the radio look good with that on the front of it. So um, I'll see if someone reproduces these. They may may well make them. I don't know how popular the Philips model is. Uh, not very, I wouldn't think. So if someone makes one, I'll see how much it is and uh, perhaps keep going with this project. Otherwise, I think I'll stop here and uh, put this aside and revisit it another day, perhaps. Well, uh, good news, everybody. I uh, put out APB on uh, Facebook buy and sell for uh, radios in Australia, uh, vintage radios, that is. And I uh, got a reply. Somebody's got a, a near new dial glass that's on its way. I'm going to test this. We'll see if it works. That valve, and that's a 6M5. Uh, now, I've got plenty of 6M5s. Uh, if you've seen other videos, you know I know I have trouble with these. Uh, this one's tests all right, except it's got more shorts than a football team. But that's on my tester. It doesn't seem to affect the way they work. So I'm assuming my tester is a bit sensitive to it. I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll give it a go for a try anyway. And I bought new ones, new old stock ones, and they still had shorts in some of those. So it's like a conventional layout, a couple of uh, caps there, or electro caps, a couple of trimmer caps, valves, transformer. Uh, very small uh, tuner. There's a there's a uh, couple of adjustments there for antenna and uh, oscillator. Little speaker. The speaker's good. It's in one piece anyway. A bit of sun damage there, but apart from that, it's alright. Well, the base here is uh, fairly typical for the time, and uh, they've managed to miniaturise a lot of stuff and fit a fair bit into a small area. It's a very deep sort of base so they've got some parts mounted vertically here and the transformer here the output transformer so they can save a bit of space doing that or we'll pack more in anyway okay um i can't see anything wrong here i'm going to buzz out the transformer and just make sure it's got no shorts to ground anywhere and uh, we'll i'll put some power on it not to put a lead on it first all right ready to go uh, as usual i've got a um, isolation transformer I've pre-selected about 230 volts in here through the Variac. Um, dim bulbs on. 
the power on the unit. I've got this uh, multimeter set on DC and it's um, on the plate of the output valve so we can see if there's any voltage getting through there. Uh, I think we're ready to go. Now I've also buzzed out the, I'll just put power on, and dim bulb's gone very dim. Very dim. Um, 13 watts though. So, let's put that, yeah, okay, I'll see what happens there. Yeah, that doesn't look right. Uh, we have got plate voltage. Got 173 volts, that should be enough to make it work. It's, uh, the volume's up. Uh, I've got an antenna on it. Oh, there's a slight hum there, so something's getting through. The speaker must be working then. So we've got plate voltage, we've got the speaker working. So uh, just a matter of determining what's not working. It's the rectifier. That one's cold. They've all got something in them. I've laid it on its back and I've got power on. If I touch this connection here, which is uh, going directly to the volume pot uh, with uh, my little conductive screwdriver or my finger, it should make a buzz, but there's nothing. So the amplifier stage isn't working. All right, I flipped it over. Um, we've still got 129, 130 odd plate voltage on that output valve. Um, I've got a music player here connected if I touch that on there, it's on full. So I'm just going to the wiper there, can go to the other one. Um, there's no sound at all. I'm applying an audio signal right there. Uh, so it could be that cap there that's not letting it through. Uh, this valve might be faulty. I can check the plate voltage up there. There's another cap there that it's uh, that's usually cooked. Uh, and I should change that straight up. Uh, grain of the grid. We know that's got plate voltage there. So just check to see if we've got plate voltage there. So here's the detector valve here. Let's see if we've got anything on the plate. Nothing. No, no plate voltage. 135 on the side there. It goes through that resistor. And we've got nothing. Start to wonder if that resistor's no good, eh? Alright, let's check out that resistor. I'll take the power off. Uh, there we go. It says open circuit. So that resistors open. Now why it's open would be a good question. This resistor is a red, red, yellow which is 2, 2 and 4, 0 so 2220K 20, and it's between the plate here and the screen here so there's our B plus coming along here so that's feeding that screen. The next one is the plate so that's getting, there it is there. So that'll be R15 is the one that's open, so we're not getting any plate on there. Let's have a look at R15, there it is, 20, yeah, 220k. So that's it. Uh, no real reason why that would be open unless this valve's uh, kaput. So maybe uh, I'll test that valve first and just make sure it's all right. And I'll throw in a new 220k resistor in there. So there's our valve, it's a 6BD7. So I'll throw that in there. Put it on short, it's on D which is 6 volt and it's already powered on so I'll just check it for short. Um, that light will come on if there's a short in there. We're allowed a short on number 5. It's number 4, if I'm a 5 that's okay. 6, Oop, short on number 7, short on number 9. Okay, I'll get a new valve. Okay, I've got a brand new one in. Um, I'll do a shorts test again. Should get 5. And see, that's what I thought. So I don't know if this test is working properly or not. Uh, go to there we go, and it should be on number two. Select number two and put it on thirty. We should get a good valve. So I thought. Okay. All right. This is the old valve. I'll just see if that's even if it works at all. No, look at that. It's bad. But right. I'll stick a new valve in. Now I've just tacked that resistor across the old one, uh, not even quite across the old one, so oh, there it goes. Well, the state government announced a 
$350 million wind farm in Queensland, southwest of Gladstone. 120,000 homes will receive power. Like that. So they're not involved in that. So there are many renewable energy projects taking place in Queensland. Many. Okay, there it is. So is this that resistor? I, I started to say I didn't put that resistor in properly because I, it's so hard to get in there. I've got to change all these capacitors anyway. But it does work. There's very little hum. Um, notwithstanding, I'll still change those two uh, electrolytic capacitors because if they haven't failed now, they certainly will uh, not get any better. And I guess, what are they, about 70, 60 something, 70 years old. So they've lasted pretty well actually, I guess. Just check, uh, I'll check the coupling capacitor. So the grid's, the grid's showing uh, about one volt there, so that capacitor's probably leaking. We can compare it to the cathode, which I think is that one there. Ugh. It's tight in here. I think it's pin three on this. So yeah, it's got minus two. Should be about minus six. So I think it's going to work pretty well. And I've had a tough few years recorded this album and we've spent all the money on sounds pretty good there's no distortion um yeah sounds good hang on yeah no distortion there um really good so i think change all the caps and i think this will be a work of beauty well i've replaced a lot of the caps most of the caps up this end have been done um, I've been checking the resistors as I go along. I found another resistor that was high, so I've changed that. Uh, so I'm up to about this area here. Uh, I'm just going to look at these electrodes, and I thought there's not a lot of room to get big electrodes. I could, I could get them in there, but what I thought I might do is take these old caps out, demount them, and drill them out, and I'll put these in and uh, restuff them, as they call it. I'll probably mount a tag strip along there, and uh, I can solder the capacitors to the the tag strip and that'll look quite neat I think. was a bit of fun wasn't it so what I'm going to do is put those in there of course then refit them up into their positions and I've got a tab strip here which I'm going to mount on one of these um, tags here and they'll just solder that down and then I can mount the uh, the legs on there and there's some resistors and uh, other things to go on there as well so that should work pretty well well it's all installed I put the little um, solder tab on there and uh, there's the uh, capacitors there, you can see them underneath. That's soldered onto the base, base all right. I broke off the little lug there, um, trying to cut it down. So I, I've just sweat soldered it on there, but that's, uh, that's quite good. So I'm happy with that. I've got another wire to go on here, and I'll do that a bit later on. Uh, and uh, I'm nearly there, so I'll keep going and we'll come back. I've changed all the caps, so uh, it's ready. I'm just going to test it and make sure it still works. I'll put it on a restricted power, I'll just make sure everything's okay. I, I double checked all the, yeah, it seems pretty good. I double checked all the positions I put everything, so so I have no reason to believe it won't work. I can hear it, very good. Melbourne right now for the Australian Nursing and Nursery Federation National Bay. Elliot's conference and yesterday at our it's new same race multi this spring racing carnival combined selection well it's working as well as it was before it, I hope it's uh, working better now it's got new capacitors in it uh, I checked all the resistors everything looks pretty good a couple that I replaced so I'm just going to check all the voltages I'll get back to you once I've done that and uh, we might do an alignment I might clean it first actually I've got to remount this um, capacitor it's on rubber and the rubber's perished and I've also got to do the string so uh, give me a minute I'll check all the voltages and uh, I'll get back I checked all the voltages and all the voltages are good except one and interestingly it's the capacitor that I thought oh, big pounds the resistor I changed the other day uh, the one that was open circuit 
So that's the resistor I changed the other day. The plate voltage on that is supposed to be 55 and we've got 100. Now when I looked at it, I can see a little crack in the resistor there. I don't know if it's going to show. I don't know what's happened to that. That's uh, very unusual unless I've overstressed it while I was working on all the other stuff. But there wasn't much I was doing in there. Anyway, I've, uh, I've got another one. That's the original. And this is a new old stock one that I've got. So uh, I'll put that one in and see what happens to it. Here's the old uh, resistor and you can see the crack there I think on the camera. Yeah. So I think I've just manhandled it too hard or something. Anyway, here's the new one. Or the new old one. So I'll turn it on and we'll see how that works. Well, let's check the voltage. I'll check it up here. It's a bit easier to get to than down on the plate. It's the same place there. And it's 100, which is pretty much what I thought. So that would indicate that valve's not pulling as much um, current as it normally would. So we'll have to find out why. Well, I've had a bit of a think and done some calculations. Um, I changed the valve just for fun. And uh, it's now running at about 88 uh, volts instead of uh, 50. And, and instead of it was 100 with the other valve in it. Uh, so doing the uh, voltage drop calculation, Ohm's Law... This valve is pulling around about 0.67 milliamps. It's allowed 1 milliamp, so uh, it's well within. Of course, it's, it's going to be lower anyway because the voltage is higher, so it's not pulling as much current as it could. So I don't really know what else to do about it. It's working all right. It's well within the limitations of the valve itself in the specifications, so uh, I can't see I can do much else about it. Uh, I checked the bias resistor. That's correct. So, uh, in light of not having any other ideas, uh, I'm going to move along. As I say, the radio is working fine, so uh, I don't think there's an issue. So I'm not going to replace the mounts for the uh, tuning capacitor, and I'll restring it. Pretty, pretty simple. It looks like it's just got a couple of rubber grommets in there, so I'll just uh, pull them out and change them. I'll just take this nut and bolt off. I could have made it a bit harder to get to. So it hasn't even got a little spacer in there. I was wrong, it does have a spacer. Okay, I've got a new grommet and uh, it uh, fits the spacer properly and I think it'll go in the hole, so we'll give that a go. That's one side done. I'll just uh, there's one other on the other side, so I'll just flip it over and do that, and uh, I'll come back and uh, we'll do the restring. Uh, let's have a go at this string. Uh, when I pulled the radio out, it had both pieces of string on it, and one was wrapped that way around this uh, tuning uh, control, and the other one was wrapped the other way. So one feeds on, one feeds off. So I've I've redone that, and there's a little pulley and the end here that it goes around. So I've wrapped that but the two strings are not long enough. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. So I think perhaps I've got too many wraps on it. It probably doesn't need many because it's actually doing it twice. And my fear is I'll undo two of these and it'll be too long. That string there's only got one wrap around it and this one's got two um, and the string's probably about right by the time I Put some stretch into the spring up in the drum there. All right, I'll give that a go. Um, should work. Looks about right. So I'll uh, get a new bit of string and we'll try that out. Well, that's it. It seems to be working. Uh, works pretty well, actually. I've just got to tighten that spring, give it a bit more tension. Um, seems to be okay. I, the only thing is the strings might be going in the reverse direction what they need to. So I'd have to, I'd have to go and work that out. And if it's okay, I'll leave it where it is. So I'll put the uh, cursor back on and uh, see if I can get a scale on. 
There we go. The condenser's closed and uh, we're on the closed end of the dial. So yeah, that's the correct way. All right, I'll tighten that spring and uh, we'll call it quits. I since refined that slightly. I've, I've put, I think I've put an extra wrap on there and I may have changed the way this is laid over. But now the inner coil follows, the, or the inner wrap follows the, the outer one. So, uh, so that's working much better. Quick update here. Last night I found this drawing for a Quintet 165. I might search for 165A, 165B, but this is just 165. So uh, here's the uh, chord layout for the dial. Um, so I'm just comparing it to my one here. And uh, I, I've got it essentially correct. Um, I've got one more wrap on here where it says one turn. I've actually got two. And the way they've laid it onto the shaft is in, a, in the opposite direction but it's in the same orientation there. Uh, I will change my one here to to match this one. Not going to make much difference I don't think. Well there it is done. Uh, I had the spring on this side. I just swapped it over exactly the way they did. It wouldn't make any difference at all. Uh, and I've uh, routed the uh, string exactly the way the drawing says and it works perfectly. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that it works much better than what I had but anyway. Uh, oh, that's the way it was. So yes, as I say, if you're using this as a, an example of how to do it, that's how you do it. Well, after I finished the dial string, I uh, cleaned up the rest of the chassis. It's uh, come up pretty good, actually. It's kept a little bits of um, where the rust has eaten through the protective uh, zinc. So I'm going to uh, just repaint those and give us some zinc paint, and that'll be fine. That'll that'll look good. So I think it's time to do an alignment now. So I'll just show you around the alignment features of the set. There's the uh, first IF, second IF. I believe that's the primary, the secondary, the primary, the secondary. Here's the aerial trimmer. Here's the aerial coil, the oscillator trimmer, and the oscillator coils down the back here. Everything's very easy to get to from the top, and apparently you can do it from in the case if you've got uh, short enough tools to turn the turn the various trimmers. These ones be all right. I'm not sure about that one. And the case would be right over here, I would think. So I'll power it up and we'll see how we go. Now the uh, instructions for this, I do have instructions, um, says don't touch that coil, so don't don't adjust that. I've got my generator running. Uh, that's connected to the aerial coil via a 100 puff cap. I've connected an analog AC meter to this point here, the plate. It's actually right there on the tone control uh, via a 0.01 capacitor and that will give us the um, AC voltage read out of the signals. All right, we're ready to go. Uh, I've got the generator set on 455. I'm going to use this uh, little metal screwdriver. I don't think it'll make any difference with this type of um, transformer uh, because it's uh, it's not inside the transformer, and, but that's the only screwdriver you can get to fit. So, all right, let's have a go. Now the tuning is out, it, it measured up at about uh, 451 I think. And I've got to say both of those were pretty spot on. Start with that one. Got a bit out of those two. So let's go back and recheck the first two. I think they're going to be right.
I'll just very quickly check by scanning up and down on the generator and uh, until I get maximum signal on the uh, on the meter here and hopefully it'll be 455. That's about it. Um, what have we got? 454.92. I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave it there. Okay. All right, I'm just going to just check the RF alignment. Um, just running the radio yesterday, it actually looked pretty good. I've hung the uh, scale on the front, just on the two knobs. Uh, I can do a. I can just move the uh, pointer along a bit if this is out. Once I get the real scale in and the uh, in the case, so uh, that won't be an issue. The scale comes off the front. You just move the pointer around. I think. Uh, now there's a mark there and that's the um, mark I've got the capacitor fully closed the uh, tuning capacitor and it's supposed to line up with that little mark there I've got my generator on 600 so I'll just turn up the volume and we should be that's perfect there so I'll just check 1420 they use as the other uh, other end of the scale so let's have a look at that I've got the generator on 1420 and that should line up with that no nothing there where is he? Huh. he's moved up there all right I'll just tune slightly towards where I want to be see if I can find it with this I'm not sure if I said this was the oscillator before it is I might have got those two mixed up. All right, I followed it back there. I'll just just get the maximum signal. All right, good enough. I just have to go back and check the 600 again now. As you expect, the uh, 600 has changed. So this should be the oscillator coil, and I'll just trim that back, and hopefully we can pull it back. Yeah, it's not far out. That's about right there, so I'll just maximise that. There we go. And back to 14 again. I've got the generator set at 1420. That looks pretty good. So I'll just uh, peek for maximum signal on the aerial uh, trimmer here, and that'll be it. That's done. All finished. Well, that was a pretty easy alignment. It uh, went smoothly and uh, got a bit more out of it. So uh, the radio is working very nicely. So I'm just going to uh, go back and get stuck into the case a bit more. I've been doing it as uh, as we go along because it takes a couple of days for each coat of paint to dry, and it's a, it's a long process. So so I'll head off to the workshop and continue with the uh, case. It's uh, time to get started on the case. So just. Um, I'll just pull apart everything that comes apart on it. Two screws on the bottom, I'll get them out. And the bottom here, it's got a little bit of uh, perspex uh, to transfer the light into the uh, scale on the front. And there's four nuts holding that front uh, panel on. So what I'm going to do, I'll put uh, a piece of aluminium in here, around there, wrap it around there, we'll glue it in. Uh, then I can fill it with body filler 
uh, the cracking that's down there, I'll double that up with some aluminium plate as well, probably put some in here just to stabilise it and we'll glue all that back together as well. And I think we should be alright, uh, it's pretty ordinary looking now and hopefully it'll come out alright. There's a bit of damage there too, I'll have to fix that.
kid. Cotton just runs that one off the blade down to deep third for a single. 30 without loss, the strikers halfway through. Well, there you go. All done. One dollar basket case, and uh, it's good to go. It'll uh, last for years. So uh, it came up really nice. Um, I had a bit of trouble painting, and uh, I had a bug land in the paint at one point, and that set me back days. Uh, anyway, so here's where the uh, damage was. That was all missing down here somewhere, and cracks across here. So um, that's all come up well. Uh, the back panel came up nice. Uh, that was all wobbly, and uh, that stiffened up nicely with the adhesive on it. Um, I had to use modern screws there. I, they didn't have any screws when we got it, so I don't have any little of the old slotted ones, unfortunately. So uh, yeah, they'll look alright. I'm not sure if I mentioned it. This cost me a dollar. I was going to use it for parts. That's why I bought it. Um, I threw it in the boot in the car and drove home with it, rattling around. And when I got it home, I thought, oh, you know, you might be able to save that. So that's what I've done. And it's come up really good. I'm very pleased with that. So it's a $1 basket case, and uh, I reckon it's good for another 50 years now. Thanks ever so much for watching, and uh, I appreciate uh, all the comments I'm getting and uh, feedback. It's uh, been terrific, and it's a great experience for me. Please keep it coming, and, uh, and I'll be back shortly with my next radio adventure. So far this over, one for 32 in the sixth. Elise Villani, the skipper of the stars, won the backflip and decides...